Good afternoon, everybody. This is Katherine Lambrecht. I'm with the Highland Park Historical Society. This is a, a modest presentation related to the Lady Elgin. So the P.S. Lady Elgin was a wooden hulled side wheel steamship that sank in Lake Michigan off the fledgling town of Port Clinton, Illinois, whose geography is now divided between Highland Park and Highwood, Illinois. After she was rammed in a gale by the schooner Augusta in the early hours of September 8th, 1860. The passenger manifest was lost with the collision, but the sinking of the Lady Elgin resulted in the loss of about 300 lives in what was called one of the greatest maritime horrors on record. Four years after the disaster, a new rule required sailing vessels to carry running lights. The Lady Elgin disaster remains the greatest loss of life on open water in the history of the Great Lakes. Amelia Naff was in her 80s, when she and others talked about early pioneer life as part of the historic preservation effort in the 1930s headed by Jesse Lowe Smith, founder of the first Highland Park Historical Society. Recalling the Lady Elgin, about 50 bodies were washed ashore and many of them were buried here, where the Miller House now stands on North Green Bay Road, Naff said. Adding to that, the remains of about 20 people were later removed when a house was built there. Archivist Nancy Webster said the lighthouse property Naff referenced sits near Oak Street and Walker Avenue where Benai Toro once stood on the Lakes Bluff. But Naff's claim and others like it have never been verified, she said. The five-year-old Port Clinton White House had been decommissioned just before the Lady Elgin event. The lighthouse keeper and his family were still residing there and could witness events unfolding. Mrs. Mary Josephine Cox, a daughter of Owen Monahan, former white lighthouse keeper. Mrs. Cox was born in the lighthouse. She recalled, quote, a body of a well-dressed woman having on a hoop skirt and wearing a long gold chain attached to a watch, being washed ashore in the vicinity of the lighthouse and the identity being established long time after the remains had been laid to rest, unquote. Quote, these are people who had actual experience, the living memory, unquote, said Julia Jonas, then Highland Park Library's Director of Adult Services of the 1934 interviews. Author historian Scott Bunsha research has turned up the scooter Call the St. Mary sank on September 10th, 1860 close to where the Lady Elgin went down. Everyone aboard the schooner perished. Chicago Maritime Museum told us about this as well. They suggested that some of the Lady Elgin and the St. Mary's bodies were commingled. The wreck of the Lady Elgin was discovered in 1989 off Highwood, Illinois by Harry Zeich. He was later awarded ownership in 1999 after a protracted legal battle. The wreck site has been cataloged by the Underwater Archaeological Society of Chicago. From the poor man's cottage, forth from the mansion door, sweeping across the wall, and a queen along the shore, caught by the morning breezes, born on the evening gale, comes me the voice of morning, a sad and solemn wail, lost on the lady Elgin, sleeping to wake no more, numbered in that three hundred, who failed to reach the shore. Staunch was the noble steamer, precious the freight she bore. Gaily she loosed her cables a few short hours before. Grandly she swept our harbor, joyfully rang her bell. Little thought we ere morning would toll so sad and knell. Lost on the lady Elgin, sleeping to wake no more. 
number didn't have 300 who failed to reach the shore. Oh, it was the cry of children weeping for parents gone, children who slept that evening but orphans woke at dawn. Sisters for brothers weeping, husbands for missing wives, such were the ties did sever in those three hundred lives. Lost on the lady Elgin, sleeping to wake no more, numbered in that three hundred who failed to reach the shore. Forth from the mansion door, sweeping across the water and echoing along the shore, caught by the morning breezes, born on the evening day, comes with the voice of morning, a sad and solemn way, lost on the lady Elgin. Sleeping to wake no more, numbered in that three hundred who failed to reach the goal. If I may. Yes. Hi, I'm Sam Polonetsky, and uh, I'm a scuba diver and uh, a member of both the uh, Chicago Maritime Museum and the Sh and the Underwater Archaeological Society of Chicago. Welcome. And uh, it really, uh, yeah, and, and hearing about, uh, I'm fascinated by anything about the Lady Elgin, that it was um, one of the first shipwrecks that I ever dove on. It's a very easy dive. Uh, it's, it could almost be considered a training dive uh, for new divers. It, it, it is that shallow, that well laid out. Uh, but um, also to knowing the history of what the Lady Elgin was doing out that night and, and having heard the stories of her sinking and how really if she would have, if the cap, if her captain would have let her continue the drift into the shore, most of her passengers would have been saved but he was afraid that she was headed in too fast. <clears throat> and so he cut loose one of his anchors to slow down the drift so they wouldn't smash on the shore. Uh, I, he, he, it was a desperate situation. Well, I mean, it, was were des very... it was a desperate situation, granted, but, uh, the, you know, if he had known, he would have been headed to a, towards a beach area, and uh, which would have he would have run aground just short of the the actual shore line. But uh, he was afraid that he might hit some rocks and snag and capsize and go over. So what he did to slow down the movement of the boat was to lower the one anchor. Uh, Unfortunately, the anchor chain wrapped around a rock. Oh. The one, when you go down there, it is the one rock as far as the eye can see. And as far as the, uh, the ROVs have gone out for miles and miles and miles. He just happened to snag the, that one rock. Uh, it's a piece of granite, uh, almost like, uh, reminds me of the obelisk in uh, the movie 2001, but uh, it's there, 
it hooked the anchor, the anchor chain and the anchor are still wrapped around that rock. And because of that, the boat, the section of the boat spun, it took water and went down at that spot and the boilers blew and that was it. Whereas if he had let the, uh, let the remains continue to drift towards shore, they would have probably run, run aground within a hundred yards of the beach, which was even in that bad stormy night, many could have swum aboard, drifted ashore, drifted ashore. So, yeah. Because I know the, the, the Calumet, which, you know, had its own problems, what, 30 years later, yeah. it did, it was brought to shore, just for the right reason for survivability. Right. Right. And so, I mean, it's a matter of a captain knowing, having to know the waters that he's traversing uh, so intimately uh, Lady Elgin made all five of the Great Lakes. Uh, I know there were, uh, there's talk and I've seen photos and that of the Lady Elgin uh, putting to port on, in Lake Superior up on uh, Shawamigan Bay in near Ashland, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it covered a lot of territory and uh, was, How old was it when she wrecked? I beg your pardon? How old was the Lady Elgin when she wrecked? Uh, I would have to look up my notes, but it would have had to have been uh, less than 20 years. Uh, but uh, she was, she, matter of fact, she was known as the elegant Lady Elgin. Of course, the, the real uh, catch to this sinking is the effect she had on uh, on this on the politics of the state of Wisconsin and literally the nation, uh, because her voyage that night was to bring down the the uh, Republican delegates from Junotown, Wisconsin, to vote in the presidential nominating convention for Abraham Lincoln in Chicago the next day. Uh, and at that time, Juno Town and Milwaukee were two separate cities. Oh, okay. And uh, one group, uh, the German group from uh, Milwaukee, the Irish were from uh, Juno Town, which was slightly west uh, across the river. Matter of fact, if you look at the old bridges of Milwaukee, across the river, you'll note that they're all on an angle. Well, the two towns were, were feuded so, so much with each other, they made sure that their streets didn't line up so that it would be more <laughs> difficult to build a bridge between the two towns. And as a result of the major politicians from Junotown being lost in the sinking, that ended up with Milwaukee taking control of Juno Town. Many and, layers uh, of the, history. And the, yes, and uh, I mean, this is the wreck that really got me interested in nautical archaeology and uh, several others. So, I mean, uh, this is really, uh, to me, it's a wreck that always catches my attention whenever I hear anything about it. You do presentations on this wreck? No, I don't. There are several from the Underwater Archaeological Society who do. They've uh, published a survey and documentation of the Lady Elgin and its sinking uh, at uh, their website, Underwater Archaeological Society of Chicago. Uh, Jim Jarecki, oh, yeah. I, I think. Yeah, and in fact, one. he was on earlier. Oh, okay. He's the He's the guy who would know about it. And of course, they were also parties to the litigation with Harry Zike. <laughs> it's a small world, isn't it? Oh, yes. Well, thank you for your contribution to the conversation today. I appreciate it very much. Because there's always for... more to learn. 
thank you for having me and uh, thank you for your interest in uh, the historic preservation. Well, you know, we I, I ex wanted really to have a, a, a formal, a more formal program, but it just wasn't quite coming together. But I also didn't want to overlook this because, you know, 160 years, you know, it's another 10 years before we hit another um, zero year. Yeah, and, another, uh, another monu monument, my, a landmark on it, but uh, it definitely is a wreck that uh, should be noted. I mean, that people don't realize. Well, number one, Illinois has the third highest number of certified scuba divers in the country. Wow. Following only Florida and California. Uh, main reason being the south end of, of Lake Michigan has one of the highest concentration of shipwrecks and plane wrecks in the world. And because it's fresh water, they tend to last a little longer. So uh, yes, there is a, a whole treasure trove of, of uh, marine and nautical history out there. By the way, as I well understand. As, Go ahead. As well as uh, aeronautical history, there are hundreds of plane wrecks out there too. Now, my understanding is there was a plane wreck, a plane, uh, a passenger plane came down in uh, just off the shores of Highland Park in the mid 1960s. And I have talked to Jim and some others and my understanding is that wreck might have already been retrieved long ago. Um, but it's something I want to follow up for an event next year. Yes, uh, it, um, yeah, uh, there definitely was. There were several more. Uh, I mean, uh, during World War II, when the Navy oh, yeah. was doing their uh, air, aircraft takeoff and landing training on Lake Michigan, uh, out of uh, Great the, the well, the ships came out of Chicago or Great Lakes. The aircraft came out of Glenview, and that and there are literally hundreds of uh, naval aircraft at the bottom of uh, Lake Michigan, off Highland Park, uh, mm -hmm. well, off of the whole shore there yeah including the, the one that uh, that president bush put down there during his training ah okay that that is something that i i, I do want to find but uh, it it's interesting but there are hundreds of avenger torpedo bombers there uh and i mean that's another interesting piece of this uh fascinating puzzle if i may uh when uh George W. Bush, the 44th president, made his land, his carrier landing on the, on the carrier Lincoln, mission accomplished and all of right, that. Right, right, right. I remember. Was, was his first carrier landing. Granted, he had at least five other flight instructor pilot officers in the cockpit with him. Uh, advising him, assisting him on making that landing, and he was proud to do it. Well, the whole, the whole joke was, this was his way of, of telling his father, hey, I made my first carrier landing. You didn't. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> that's family rivalry right there. Yes, and uh, so that is the joke behind that. And uh, it's one of the planes off there that is probably off Highland Park, Winnetka, Wilmet. Uh, we, Navy records don't show exactly who, which pilot was on which aircraft when it went, went down. Right, and e even that, that uh, sorry, uh, the, that boat that, that turned on the in the Chicago River. Oh, the Eastland. The Eastland. You know, that was later on brought back to life and, and it was part of the training mission for the, the Navy. Yes, it was. Uh, matter of fact, that is probably the the boat that he took off that he was attempting to land on. Right, right. And thank you again, sir, for joining us. That really added a lot of uh, content and context to the uh to the situation thank you and have a good day thank you, thank you for having and have a good day thank you hi my name is no